Welcome to the Intern Whisperer Live, the show all about internships and how to survive them. This is Jerron. This is Isabella. And joining us for this episode is Taylor Chastain, a previous graphic designer student from Valencia College and, well, uh, not previous. She is getting ready to graduate. Let <laughs> me just fix that. Um, but she was a previous intern with Pivot Business Consulting and our Intern Pursuit Game. Also with us is Jeff Basista, another Valencia student that he's going to share what it was like today at the Valencia College Market Day and other cool things. And also coming up this episode of Intern Whisper Alive, we're going to talk about some great leaders, entrepreneurship, art, entrepreneurship, and the coolest innovation in your industry. We're kind of stumbling over our words today. Didn't this happen to us last week? It happens. <laughs> I, think, it happens. I swear. It Entrepreneurship is just like, you got to like emphasize it. I <laughs> know, I know. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A excited. <laughs> so our social plugs. So you can find Pivot Business Consulting and Intern Pursuit on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter and on LinkedIn and our Instagram. And please help us boost our Instagram. Also, um, you can watch us live here at Valencia College at mixlr.com forward slash Valencia College Radio. And you can watch us live on Facebook. And we've got to switch people over to our live Facebook on Interim Pursuit. So no, this will be the last time we'll be on the Pivot Biz, just okay, so you know, great, Jerome. Great. We're going to switch it over to Interim Pursuit now. Awesome. Awesome. Anyway, back to you. But until then, let's talk about our first sponsor. Starter Studio, an accelerator and co-working area located in downtown Orlando. A cool co-working space to 100 plus companies working in areas of technology and supportive businesses. A healthy startup community doesn't exist in a bubble. And Starter Studio is working to connect startups to a broader entrepreneurial ecosystem that will help them grow. You can find them at starterstudio.org. Thank you, Starter Studio, for sponsoring the Intern Whisperer Live. We love this music. This is uh, music that was done by Sophie Lloyd, a, an intern with us from England. She is coming to America, and she will be here in two more weeks. And unfortunately, she won't be able to be on the show live. I was really trying to get her live. But, but next time. But next time. Yeah, next time she's in the United States. So, Taylor. Yay, I'm so happy hey. that you're here. Yeah. <laughs> So um, you're a graphic design student, and you know what I've realized? I've had some other graphic designers on here, and we've mm -hmm. never talked about what it is that you learn as a graphic design student here at Valencia. So what's that like? So the really great thing about here at Valencia is that we, we, we kind of jump right into the programs, and that really helps us get right into what it is, what the workload is like, um, our our class, Graphic Design Essentials, really focuses on the three core programs from the Adobe Suite, which is Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, and you're going to touch on all three. So it gives you a really good sense right away uh, kind of what the work is going to be like, and then it just kind of escalates from there, and each class is just building and building on that. And just having – it kind of takes out the um, – what's the word I'm trying to think of? The – the concept of it and kind of makes it feel real right away rather oh, than that's nice. like, we're not just going to talk about concepts all day. We're going to do it. Like here's this concept. Now we're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of stuff in class and every, it's like every, hands on application yeah, right away, right away. And that's, I think the really good thing. And that's why I think we're so strong is because we just jump right in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best thing. I think so. I would agree. But you have, one of the things that I really admire about you is you have this background that's in fine art mm -hmm. and graphic design. And a lot of times people don't know that there's a difference. I bet you did not know that. There is a difference, fine art and graphic design. I knew only because my brother also majored in art. Oh, okay, okay. So you have a little <laughs> yeah. bit of knowledge little bit, there. <laughs> yeah, and so art is like that fine art side. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell our listeners what the difference is? And you have that that eye that brings a whole different dimension to the art, which is really makes it, again, pop so much on a different level. Well, first off, thanks. That's very <laughs> sweet of you. Um, the major difference between fine art and graphic design is that in fine art, you're typically creating for yourself. You're expressing yourself. And if people like yourself, then they buy the stuff that you want to make. Not to say that artists don't also make things or are... Um, or have contracts and stuff like that, but for the most part, 
you're kind of creating and almost doing kind of whatever you want. I know that's very general. Uh, I don't want any artists to come yelling at me, but I mean, that is kind of... Well, art's personal. So. Yeah, it's very yeah. personal. And yes, you also have critique and stuff and there is a technical side. But um, at one point, sometimes the technical side gets kind of thrown out the window. There's just art is so vast and so broad and there's so much. And with graphic design, you have to take yourself out of it. You're no longer creating for yourself. You're creating for another client, another person. You're never creating for yourself. Not to say you can't create for yourself on your own, but for the most part, it's all about the client and it's a little more structured, it's a little more rigid and there's there's rules and you could break the rules just like fine art but for the most part i think the big difference is you know creating for yourself versus creating for someone else and meeting their needs so i'm going to share a little story i love art and i took um an art class when i my first two years were at university of florida and so i took this art class and um this this sounds so simple but in the class they threw all of these paper bags on a stage and we were supposed to draw paper bags. Mm -hmm. And I never knew how freaking hard that was to do <laughs> because there's angles and then there's shadowing. And mm. they were like crumpled up. And all of a sudden, it became so incredibly hard. When I moved over to Rollins, which is where I graduated from, I took another art class. I took many. I, I love art. And this one was the human body. So we had mm -hmm. a, a live model that came in. Oh, and then the that was totally <laughs> different, too. So to me, fine art, when you're describing it, I, I really do understand it. But I had a different appreciation for people that actually it's not work it's like an innate talent and mm -hmm. i i can see that in your work it's just mm -hmm. it's really Thanks. um very it's alive you. it's you Thanks. Yeah. it's her yeah yeah it's definitely her yeah that's a cool part about graphic design is even though we are creating for clients there's always a little bit of yourself in mm -hmm. everything you do which is very cool but i've seen even in other people that are uh graphic designers i see their personality because they'll have preferences on color palettes mm -hmm. they have there's a, a part of their personality because others that have worked with us like if mm -hmm. they work at disney they like the the disney kind of character look about them if they're into anime mm -hmm. even still if they're designing something for a client i can see their personality in mm -hmm. there which is still different from the fine art side. I don't, yeah. It's hard to explain. Yeah, it, it is different from the fine art side. And that kind of gets into that illustration line where mm. the, you, you know, the graphic design line and the fine art line can sometimes blur with the, with illustration. And it, there's so many ways to illustrate and there's classical ways, there's digital ways, yeah. and it just depends on how you're using those illustration skills. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I want to make sure that we, we give a lot of time to different topics here. So, but you chose a career path. Now, I know when you and I were talking, mm -hmm. you said that you, I don't know if you can share it or not, but, you know, I think you have a job when you graduate. I'm not sure. Uh, I know you may not be able to say anything. Yeah, I can't say anything right now, but it's all very up in the air. Everything's up yeah. in the air. <laughs> yeah. But you chose graphic design for a reason. Why did you choose that one? Um, it was actually, I was in fine art and I was very focused in ceramics. I thought that was going to be my life. That was going to be my journey. I was going to move on to UCF and it was just ceramics all the time. And then I was trying to get really frustrated with ceramics because I felt like I wasn't growing fast enough. I felt like what I wasn't, what I was doing wasn't quality enough and I was getting really frustrated with it and I just couldn't envision myself making a life out of it as much as I loved it. And that's actually when I decided and I kind of realized that I, I flourished when I had more rules. Mm, so the more rules I had, the better I did. So any like art project we had where it's like, okay, you can only use this color or you can, or you have to do this. I was always really into those projects because I'm not it the really kind of challenged your imagination, I guess. Oh, uh, uh, more like focused it because I'm not the type of creative individual where you just give me a blank piece of paper and you're like, do whatever you want. I'm going to be like, I don't know. Like, can you like, <laughs> does it have to be a son? Does it have to, what, is it a person? And is, is there a theme? No, just do whatever you want. Oh, I'm paralyzed. I don't know yeah. what to do. Yeah, I get it. So I like the restrictions. And when I realized that and I, I just was like, Hey, isn't graphic design a little more focused on that? And I just tried essentials and I loved it. Yeah, that's super cool. So, uh, you know, I'm sitting here trying to put my hand on this mouse and I'm going, where is it? Okay, so <laughs> you started when you came in with me, you began working on the game. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And that was when we were interviewing and you went, games? I get to work on games? Mm-hmm. You like games? I like games too. <laughs> I told these cool. guys here, you guys don't know anything about games until you talk to this, this woman. She <laughs> is going to blow you out of the water. She is a game maven. So she knows stuff here. And her contributions to our game was incredible. She she brought a really different depth on, like, the story when we were creating the story. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. And and we've got it nailed down now. Oh, sweet. And, yeah, it's it's That's coming awesome. along. And Allie is going to be working on the website that you created for oh, as cool. the wireframe. Awesome. So you're going to see that coming alive now. Mm. That's the next thing that's coming out. Um, but you were so... Gosh, I, I mean, you just brought a different level to the whole process. So what oh, did you thanks. like about being on the game team? I really loved the team, I yeah. think, the most. They like were, you guys were all clicking. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I think that really helped. I remember when I met Tyler first, he was the first on the team yeah. that I met. And right away, I was dressed I'm not going to lie. I was just super, super nice that first day Yeah, because I just didn't know. Yeah, I was super (laughs) like conservatively dressed and very girly looking. And I remember I could feel Tyler's nervousness when he talked to me when he's when you were like, okay, she's working on the game. And I could feel him like, (laughs) he's He's not that judgmental. He's really not. Uh, (laughs) No, but I could feel it. I could feel it in his body and like the way he was like so nervous talking to me at first and then the more I started like name dropping games like oh so it's like this it's like Bioshock but with this flair and he's like oh, thank god yes yeah <laughs> she knows it's like that it's like that <laughs> oh, and he, re- he relaxed immediately and we had like a great, for- great yeah. first chat but all the guys were so it was so easy to connect with them because we all had that very like uniting thread. Yeah, so that was really and fun. I was the the one that was the complete novice. Whenever we have <laughs> conversations about the game, it really shows because I only play Panda Pops, and that is not <laughs> that is not that the is. kind of game. I <laughs> oh see. God, I've never heard of it either. It's like nobody knows. It's like I knew what Bioshock was. I don't know what Panda Pops. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, those are real games in the world of games. My game is like. A five-year-old place, you know? <laughs> but that's okay. You know, they assure me it's still a legitimate game. They're kind to me. One of the funniest times in our meetings was when, like, the guys would really get going like fast with things, and they would just start name dropping some like very specific video game words, and I'd be like, oh, Isabella, PvP, you know yeah. what PvP is? Oh. Oh. Player versus she was player. My you, got <laughs> <laughs> you got that, and you're like, no, I didn't know. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> Yeah, it was so funny. And, you know, and I would go and ask you things because I was really comfortable asking you with that. And sometimes the guys were kind of going, well, why isn't she asking me? You know, meaning me. Why am I not asking them? It's like, she's easy to talk to. (laughs) Well, they just, they don't know what you don't know. And then I just was like, I wonder if Isabella knows. Like, we, like, we'll get onto something. And I'm like, I don't think Isabella, let me, like, get her in on this. Like, so she knows what to do. She's highly empathetic and sympathetic. (laughs) two people around her this is one of her many gifts that she has and she pays attention to um everyone to make sure that they feel included that's a really great Aww. gift that she has i i love that about right. her. i don't want people to feel left out i know i know <laughs> you're so good at making sure we all felt included in there so what piece of advice would you give for somebody that's looking for an internship i would say Aside from the nitty gritty stuff like picking an internship, blah blah blah, when, like but when let's say like you have an internship, I think treat it with the respect of a real job. It is important. Yeah. You want and the point is you want to grow. So if you make a mistake, it's okay, and just yeah. don't freak out and just do your best to act professional. Don't break down. Don't talk down. Just I don't know. Be be calm and professional and clear. Mm-hmm. And I think also. There's some, and you wouldn't think this about me, but I also kind of go through this process where you'll be going really fast through stuff. And then I, a part of me just wants to be like, I don't really know what she's talking about, but I guess I'll figure it out later. <laughs> and I kind of, oh, but you I, mean me, I'm going through things really fast. No, not useful. I, I'm trying to just like, <laughs> so you'd get really into talking about something. You're like, okay, we're going to do this. Da, 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 da. And, I'm like, and you're going, what is she talking about? <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm following, but then sometimes I'm like, no, don't just like nod your head. Like sometimes I'd stop and, and just, just re it's okay. If you ask someone to reiterate. Yes. And I do that why. all the time. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'll be like, so we're making it like this and this. 
And then you'd say, no, like this. Oh, I'm on board. Please yeah. continue. Yeah. I think that's totally okay. And I think sometimes just because oh, yeah. someone's in a superior, we get really terrified to be like, oh, no. wait, I just want to make sure. Do I understand yeah. now? <laughs> Yeah, Jeff asks a lot of questions, too. That's really good. I, mm-hmm. I like that he asks questions. That's good. And I usually, like when I work with students that are international students, I'll say, now if I talk too fast, tell me to slow down. If I say something you don't understand, you know, ask me. But, you know, I really appreciate that feedback because that actually will help me to make sure that if I say, hey, ask me questions when I say stuff. Because that's, yeah, yeah you're you right. Can, if, you, if you look at them and, you, and they look like this, <laughs> then, then maybe make sure they're okay. And you'd you'd get you'd see me have that look sometimes. You'd be saying stuff, and I'm I'm absorbing. And sometimes I'd get that distant look. That glazed like, look, like what is she talking about? And then you'd be like, wait, are you okay? I'm like, yes, processing. And then we'd talk. <laughs> <laughs> so it happens, and um, that's true. We just get excited about what we're talking about, and we yeah. move quiet, and we move quickly, and it's it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're doing this promotion called What I Learned. Mm-hmm. So what did you learn from your internship that you think that's going to be something you can carry forward into your job, into your personal life, wherever? I think I learned to be less scared of it is Confident. the best way I can do. Um, I, I've always been like nervous about having a real job, and I've been a student for so long. And mm-hmm. uh, just because with all the fine art time and then the graphics time, I've been in school like six years it's oh, wow. straight. Yeah, so, um, so I'm almost like it's, it's sort of a little scary on the other side. And, um, that definitely helped ease my, my scaredness. I was like, Oh, I can just still talk to people as if at school and it's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's good that to the know. Big one. I think that's something that most people that work with me say, it's usually the confidence factor, mm-hmm. um, goes, gets bumped up a lot because I, I try to make sure I empower people. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the voice counts. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that also. Thank you. So great leaders. Hmm. Who are three leaders that have influenced or bettered your life? for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Now, we usually ask on a global, local, and a personal level, but we know that many times it can be kind of blurred lines, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, some people do have their definite, like, what it is. The vision. Yeah, but if you have, like, your own, like, three personal or whatever. Yeah, and they can be living or dead. It doesn't, you know, Mm -hmm. people influence us. It could be your grandparents, right? Mm -hmm. It could be anybody. Can I name drop a million personal people sure <laughs> go ahead <laughs> yeah. just some uh, basically the graphics team here uh, oh my god christy and jason we love them yes <laughs> jason ellison christy panino jeff janelle you still need to meet him um, oh yeah i do uh con my uh you know my husband and yeah <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna throw your mom out there because your mom and my mom cool. and my dad <laughs> yeah, I was mom came out there. to our my whole our... family is so crazy supportive and that's like a huge bonus. Yeah, what you guys don't know is that her mom, um, when we did demo night mm-hmm. at Dr. Phillips, her mom came also, and it was so cool because her mom is like she just fits right in with the rest of us, and she's <laughs> going, "Hey, what do you think about this and this and this?" You know, mm-hmm. she just she was helpful. She was all kinds of stuff. Isn't that stuff. the best feeling for you though about how involved your mom actually is? Though. Oh my God! I have the best mom ever. <laughs> We're not going to leave your dad you out. <laughs> we know that your dad. My dad too. is so awesome. But yeah. me and my mom are insanely close. Yeah, you're is... like you have a grown-up peer friendship. Thing, yeah, right? she's yeah. a total trip. I love her so much. <laughs> and you would talk about your mom so much, and I really like that too. So yeah. I, I put your mom like right up there as one of your yeah. most influential leaders. Mm-hmm. And then also, um, I don't know if I got to talk to her about her too much, but. But Nusa Gaspar, my friend, no. my best friend in Canada, is constantly, I mean, we mainly message, but when I can, I try to, like, we try to, we play online together yeah. is, like, the big thing. But, I mean, she's always being my life coach. Um, Nuspa. What kind of a name is that? I like Nusa. Nusa. N-E-U-S-A. Portuguese. I like it. I like it. It's beautiful. Yeah. She's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So, um, and then... I have another, I have a really good portfolio buddy who's also my Orlando bestie. Her name's BG. Mm-hmm. And we're basically dying together <laughs> through this extreme experience of portfolio review. It's super crazy stressful. It's a lot to do. And it's so. like in, t- what, it's next week, isn't it? Uh, two two weeks. weeks. It's two weeks. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm so excited. I'm going to see you and Angel and Jamie. I'm going to yeah. see so many people's stuff there. Almost Angel. Oh, yeah. Okay. Almost. Well, I'm maybe she'll still show You'll up. see Jamie. She'll drop in. I saw yeah. his portfolio. I saw his, Recently, too. He yeah. was telling. He was a guest last week, and he was telling yes. us all about it. Yeah. It's awesome. So, yeah. yeah, just everyone in graphics and my friends and family, they're just, they're the whole reason I am, like, one piece. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Special shout out to them. Mm -hmm. And then anything cool in tech? Any programs that you've used in your mm. graphic fine art or anything cool that you've experienced personally or mm. just interesting stuff? We um, we don't really officially use it here on Valencia in the graphics department, but we do use a program called Sketch. Mm. And I used it. Wait, is that the Google one? Mm -mm. Okay. No, this is Sketch. The little logo is kind of like a yellow diamond mm. and it's a really great um design tool wireframe tool very similar to illustrator and design and all that but a little different um it's got its advantages and i actually used it for a lot of your stuff um mm. they're really great for really quick things um if you're more into illustration uh, a good friend of mine who's graduated um he recommended this really cool program called mischief and I've played with it a little bit. Mm. It's a it's a illustrating program, and it has infinite zoom, and it can output it as a vector. It'll infinite zoom. Infinite that means zoom. It must be like how Google. I would think Google Maps goes <laughs> zoom right onto oh the piece gosh. of asphalt. <laughs> on it's the like street. say in Illustrator, you can zoom in like really really close. Well, you can zoom in even 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 more close with oh my mischief. Yeah, so it's, it's called it's mischief. Scary. It's called mischief. <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. cool. That's another really cool program. Now we're all going to be looking that one up. Uh -oh. yeah. yeah, it's not that very point. expensive. Well, <laughs> obviously, it's good with a tablet. Yeah. You need like, yeah. something to yeah. <laughs> Very that good. Cool. Very good. Well, I think we're going to be going to our next sponsor, and then we're going to be hearing from Jeff. Let's put Jeff in the hot seat, all of us. Now, he's kind of a drop-in guest. Um, I really wanted him to come in today, so he wasn't officially on the agenda. But um, he is an intern that's an extraordinaire also, and he takes things off of my shoulders. So we're going to put him on the hot seat and ask him all kinds of questions, maybe, that were not on the list. Are you ready, Jeff? Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. But first, we're going to talk about our sponsor, <laughs> yes. BMDM Marketing Agency. BMDM is a direct marketing agency focused on helping companies reach individuals through online and offline means. Their newest product enables them to send postcards or letters to the homes of anonymous website visitors within 24 hours of their visit using a patented IP matching technology and our in-house on-demand printing. Thank you, BMDM Marketing Agency, for sponsoring the Intern Whisperer Live. His mouth's going slow. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk to Jeff, another Valencia College student that's studying business administration and will transfer to UCF. How you doing, Jeff? Pretty good. How about yourself? Pretty good. First of all, when do you transfer? When do I transfer? Um, I haven't scheduled that yet. Mm -hmm. It's kind of open to goal. I'm still like a freshman here at Valencia, so I'm, I have to finish up my next year. Okay. Also, okay. okay. He, he says he's a freshman, but I assure you, he's like a 40-year-old and his, <laughs> okay. his body and his maturity old and soul. everything. He's an old soul. He is an old soul. <laughs> that is for sure. He's, yeah. He is really, he doesn't come across as like a, a traditional freshman, mm. you know? He's People got a lot say of the same confidence. thing about me all the time. Hey, so, compliment. I get that. But what made you choose um, to study business administration? Um, ultimately, I feel like because I didn't really know what I wanted to go to college for. and um, But I knew I wanted to go to college. And I knew um, from a basis of I, – I played sports my whole life. So mm -hmm. I didn't really have a basis on a, like a medical field or any other type of – I don't want to say vote tech to go into. So I – I figured I would go for business administration because it had the broadest field I could go to. And after at least getting my um, minor in it, my uh, associates, that I could transfer that and turn it into a lot of things because there's business in everything. Uh, everything that um, – business is in everything. You can apply it to um, – small business is in everything. And ultimately, that's why that's why I chose this because no matter what path that I chose, I could I could ultimately use my degree for something better in my life. No matter what it was, I chose. I guess if it wasn't business, what other career path would you be interested in, or where would you like to apply that degree? Possibly. 
Um, my business degree? Yeah. Um, or even if you didn't, like, for some reason, like, even if you weren't majoring in business, what would you want to do, possibly? Oh, what would I want to do? Yeah, like, what just interests you? Um, I like racing cars, you know. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big sports guy. I, I wrestled for 14 years, and I played football for 12. So mm. up until ending of high school, really, um, that's all it was. It was sports. It was, you know, racing cars, you know, just doing crazy things as a kid. And I never really ultimately thought about a future life of, like, being in business or an actual workspace because mm-hmm. I feel like in my mind it, it was it was all about the sports it was either I was going to play football or I was going to wrestle in college and you know things change and as you get older I feel like that's why it's such a, a hard question for me to answer because I'm still trying to figure that out ultimately oh I get that I, yeah. I'm still doing it well. I, of like why I chose this path and I feel like sometimes I do but other times I don't I feel like that's just the difficult mm-hmm. thing about like this age mm-hmm. is because like we're forced to technically like go to school, pay all this money for right. a career that we assume we'll have for the rest of our life and right. easily change yeah. the next day. You know what? I think that's a mistake. And, and I'm really glad that you brought that up because that is actually um, not true. When we choose a career, you're not choosing – I think that's what we've been taught in the past is that you're choosing a career that's supposed to be for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And if you know what your gifts are, for me, you know, I like teaching. I love teaching. And so I've taken everything that I love, and it's been something that's been a progression. So never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would run a business. (laughs) I was an English major, so I went into teaching for that reason, and I chose the public classroom. And there were other paths I was thinking, but then I started having other interests, nonprofit. And so I take the gifts of writing and research, and I go into that arena. So I feel like what I would encourage all of you is to realize you're not the only one. No matter how old a person is, they are wanting to reinvent themselves. And it seems to happen about every five, seven years, they go, okay, I know this amount of knowledge, and it's in this industry, and I'm going to go and pivot and do this, you know? So don't feel that you're locked down to this, is what I would say, because, like, I already know everybody in this room is going to do most amazing things, and it's not going to be just what you think you're doing right now. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes back to business, is there a specific area that you think you might like to focus on? Um, like at least like when you transfer, possibly? I, if I tra- when I transfer to UCF, um, I want to focus on marketing, and I, I kind of – honestly, I wanted to double major in integrative business and marketing, mm-hmm. and uh, ultimately, that's not a life goal. I, I don't know what I want to do as my whole career, but I say that's, it's a goal I have. I'm working towards something, and that's what matters, and like you said, uh, you shouldn't base your – base now off of this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It's, it's an objective. It's a goal, and you can reinvent yourself in any, any way you, yeah. you want. Integrated business, we hear that all the time now. We don't do. We? I, I used to be an integrated business. Major. Really? Yeah. yeah. I was. I was at first semester. Yeah. And I'm how a, many people have been on the show that are integrated business? I feel like a good like four, five. Yeah. yeah. Four or five. I'm excited. I'm looking forward. Me to Me included. It. I used to be. I heard it's a great program. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Plus, if you go into marketing, then you might work with me one day. Uh-oh. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Actually, could work with the little could, tripod yeah. right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rod, yeah. right here. We're all connected. <laughs> Rod scope. Yeah, it's all. We're talking happen. about video games again with the Triforce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now we're the Triforce. Yeah, yeah. It's Zelda. Uh, <laughs> so, when it comes to marketing, is there like a specific company you would like to possibly uh, work for in the future? Um. Actually, off the top of my head, no, mm-hmm. honestly, because I'm more of the person I, I want to I want to start my own business. And I, I really I value my time on my, my time is my most valuable thing to me. So my job to me is everything now, because like I said, I, I wrestled and I played football and that was that was my life. So the things I do on my daily basis is those are meaningful to me. And to to think about working for somebody else, I would say an ultimate goal I, I can't put that in perspective, but if the if the offer would come from a big company, then mm-hmm. obviously I'd have to do my I'd have to do my research. But I'm I would want to start my own business ultimately, which is why he's in an entrepreneurial yeah. <laughs> system. It's uh, I, I value I value my my time very appreciatively, and I I couldn't view myself working like the the nine to five mm-hmm. every like Monday through Friday. And even though I ultimately I know I'm going to have to go through that process and. Like I said, it's it's my view now of things, but they can change. It's not like a, 
like a life Sets career. Up stone. Thing. Yeah, right. But it's the steps you got to go through in the getting what you want. And like, if you were able to have that business today, do you have an idea of what it would be? Oh, I got a big book with a list of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> He's a journaler. He keeps. But, yeah, I, I like I like writing down like my thoughts and ideas, and I have a big I have like a notebook filled of them. But I would. It's it's cliche, but I I want to start a business to where I can I can really make an ultimate impact on the world for good. Kind of now swaying it to like even a political version of it. Um, of I want I just want the best for everybody because I know I didn't have a lot growing up and and then as I grow older I see more opportunities and and the advancements in technology especially I I, I really feel I if I could I would want to start a company that has something to do with like the revolution you revolution of technology mm. and that could mm. possibly help. Okay, ultimate. really good book. I'm going to suggest that and watch the videos, The Fourth Industrial Age. I'm going to have to watch that. that. Yeah. And there's a book on it, and it's all about exactly what you're describing, technology and how it's moving at a light speed for us. Yeah. All right. And going back to Pivot and your internship, um, what did you start working on, or at least what was your first project when you start interning with Pivot? My first project, ooh, I would say... My first project was I think I was doing um, I was learning the administration side of yeah. business and I was doing um, st financial state yeah we were doing accounting like because accounting, uh, yeah. when yeah. Um, originally he wanted to have marketing as his focus mm -hmm. but he's really business administration that's what he had declared at Valencia so the powers that be over there said no he can't have just a focus on marketing you need to make sure he has a well-rounded experience and I went no problem. So um, I gave him the 2017 expenses and receipts and all of that great stuff so he could learn how to organize records like how an accountant would do. Mm. And so there was a focus on accounting, and then he's had marketing, and you've had events. Yeah, I do I do all the events. And on, I feel for the most part of, like, the objectives I learned, whether it's accounting or marketing, um, the environment we're in down at Starter Studios mm -hmm. now, it's incredible. You You learn all of it. All at once for the I feel the most part of just hearing the the pitches that from the startup businesses mm -hmm. around us and then ultimately going to ask anybody anybody around you for questions and it's a good thing that they know everything around you yeah <laughs> they surrounded do. by smart people and it, it it's really good help base um, and the environment around me allows me to learn accounting and marketing all in one and management and management that's a big thing i, I want to do the, the marketing management I'm, I'm real big at management too so i think that's he likes the that. sales side okay yeah. he's out there trying to sell not trying he's he's selling intern pursuits to employers <laughs> he's got his voice out there one of the things that he did also was he helped um with the lake highland prep event that we had oh. and he and luke mm -hmm. each had a group and they were in charge of helping to facilitate that workshop that we did with them so you, I, I hope my talk group, about that. I hope I hope my group uh, target academic partners. I think it mm -hmm. was. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a really interesting experience. Actually, I felt um, I felt actually really comfortable though because from ultimately I relate my life back to sports as I always do. I've I've been in that position before, and but it was so different and in such a different environment this time. And to actually teach the kids uh, like in high that are in Lake Highland Prep who are way more advanced than I ever was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. In their entrepreneur class, that was that was that was awesome to hear about that. But getting to like teach them and show them of like somebody my age that's not much older than them, that's just coming out of this, that's you know, pr practically them almost, just a little more have a little more experience into it. And to teach them um, how to do like their business plans or no, um, we worked on hashtag formulas and then we used uh, uh, titles, headlines. headlines and Creating posts, and then at the end, they all had a, they all actually had what pretty good presentations. And mm -hmm. how long did we have? Yeah, they had three weeks where they were working. Um, we gave them a short presentation. They had three weeks to build some content. I went two weeks ago and I watched their presentations. They're going to be coming on as guests on the show and that be exciting. Um, towards the end of this month. Okay, so our fans yeah. look forward to that. Yes, Lake yeah. Highland Prep. Those students will be coming in the studio. And since you mentioned hashtags earlier, what did you learn from your internship with Pivot? What did I learn um, from from the Lake Highland Prep of like the, oh the whole thing? Whole. Pick oh, the one whole. thing that you learned that you think is the most valuable. What I learned is the most valuable: collaborative working. Mm. 
Um, I'm a very big extrovert, but when it comes to learning things, I'm a really big introvert. I, I feel like, um, cause that's my thing. I don't, I don't like things. I don't know. I want to learn everything. I want to be really smart now. And when it, when it comes to learning new things, I'm very introvert. Like she sees me, I'll put in my headphones and I'll listen to music. And then mm-hmm. if I, if I zone in, I'm good. And, um, I, it, being with her and um, how helpful she is, she's really she involves me so much. She doesn't treat me like an intern. She'll ask me questions like, "What do you think about this? What do you think about that?" And I'm like, "Wait a minute, my input like really matters at the end of the day, you know." Instead of just like her saying it or making it, announcing it, um, she really means it. And the co- collaborating, like working in, in the workspace, it's taught me that to go to others for help. Mm-hmm. And um, and I ultimately I think in marketing that's that's what's going to help me a lot too. As team a, dynamics, team, right? Le- yeah, learning team dynamics. As much as I played sports and I, and I thought I, I knew it all, I'd still learn something new every day. I concur with that statement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Team dynamics? Yeah. Yeah, well, I love teams. They always, you know and, and also, like, the part about not treating us like an intern. Oh, like, no. like yeah. getting our input and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I totally, that, well, first off, you know, intern pursuit, it should be about what is the voice of an intern, right? Mm-hmm. But secondly, I think that there's this place where, um, a stereotype kind of exists, and I'd love to break that stereotype where somebody thinks, "Oh, interns are just are just like go get the coffee, yeah, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. that kind of thing." I have so many, like, well, not so many, but I've had like people be like, "Oh, so you got to go get the coffee, and it's terrible, right?" I'm like, yeah. "No, yeah. <laughs> I did this, not at all. <laughs> Wait till that page, of that website comes up. It's gonna look awesome. That's a lot of your artwork that's up there too." So it's it's really funny, yeah, that people think that way. But on the other end of the spectrum, I think that there's this place where generationally, um, we as humans, we tend to think, oh, they don't know this, you know. Mm. So people in their yes. 60s, 70s, 80s, they they don't know this. And I think if we could see people just not in generations, but just as, wow, you know this and you know this, and let's just work together. I think. We could get so much more done. Yeah. I know, like, one of my friends who, like, works for, like, she's also, like, a producer of, like, a news company here mm-hmm. in Orlando. Um, it's rare for someone that, who just graduated college to become a producer for a news station. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, one of the people she works with, I think they need it, like, they always, like, look down on, like, millennials in general just yeah. because mm-hmm. they feel like, you know, they don't really know as much mm-hmm. because they've been at the station for, like, I guess, like, a good 20 years or something. Mm-hmm. But then I think, like, one day he found himself, like, asking her, like, hey, I have to do, like, a Facebook Live. How do I do this? Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. like problem and then solver. Stuff sh- shifted, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's like then people start respecting her more. She was doing that that extra ten percent on top of the hundred mm-hmm. percent. That that just a little extra egg, that goes a long way. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, it do- it does. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot. That generalization of like millennials and <laughs> what do they but know? But I hear it also when somebody <laughs> says it about Gen Y or, or yeah, or, or any or, generation, not or, just you know millennials. Any of those generations is There's, like oh, it's bad to generalize. I think in any aspect yeah, of anything, it is. really, you know, male, female, race, ethnicity, yeah, it just you know, doesn't matter. Pres- you know, whatever preferences are, it really doesn't matter. I mean, just we're people, and mm-hmm. we all have some. Great gifts, and we all have something to contribute. So it's like focus on that instead. I'm stuck in that little age gap. It's like the the X variety where I'm not the millennials, like we're the 2000s babies. Yeah, But Gen then Z. I'm not like the oh, beginning of yeah. the 90s. I'm right there in the middle. So I got like life before technology mm-hmm. I'd say, and like cell phones, and then I'm growing up into it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool. It gives me a, a good out, like a view on a lot of things, mm-hmm. I feel. Mm-hmm. And you said you're a freshman right now, right? I am. I'm finishing up my second semester now. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to see how to ask this, but when, like, once you're like a senior, when those four years have passed, so like, where do you want to see yourself? Where do you want to like? What do you think you want to achieve by then? What do I want to achieve? Uh, realistically, or <laughs> my personal like? Uh, I mean, what I think I should. Technically, dreams can <laughs> become realistic. So. Right. Yeah, what would Disney. you like? Disney. Let's just live in Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> um, dreams come true. Okay. Yeah, ultimately, uh, it's it's four years away, so I still, I still got a lot of work. I still got to go through the process, and as much as some steps I feel like I got I to gotta head in a little bit, I could skip. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to, and I, I really want to follow my steps all the way through college. But after college, where I see myself is I, 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 I want to be – I, I want to be living comfortably, ultimately, and realistically of my goal of – if I don't hit my like, oh, this is I, I did it and all that. I want to be I want to be comfortable living. I want to be able to give my family everything I can, and I want to I, I want I want to know 
not know who I am, but I ultimately I want to I want to figure out my life goals after college because, mm. like we said, we're stuck in that age group to where even though I have a goal to go to to go to um, UCF and do marketing, but I, I feel that now my life changes every six months. I, I feel I get that. like uh, <laughs> last year I was living in New Smyrna and then. All of a sudden, I'm moving downtown to go to college out of nowhere, and mm -hmm. I'm leaving my serving job in New Smyrna, and I'm telling my mom next day, hey, I'm moving out. And she's like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was just kind of sporadic. But um, after college, I, I just see myself working and um, just really progressing still, just doing the process. I'm, I, I believe in it a lot, and I, I, to give a direct answer, I, I don't have one, honestly. I'm really – I'm one of those optimists. I'm an – optimist people i like i like the idea of what what could i do you know not it's like this is what i'm gonna accept yeah not so it's do. nice you over here were saying i like the boundaries because uh -huh. it helps you to focus but some of us don't always want the boundaries right well in regards to graphic design i like yeah. the restrictions restrictions more than boundaries i, I get what you were yeah. saying on that because i did i did like that comment how you were like if you just give me a blank piece of paper and say come up with something i'm not that kind of creative there's so <laughs> many different types of creatives and then, like, to get back on that, that planning your life thing, I think it's really unfair for anybody to make rigid life plans. Yeah. I think yeah. it's good to have general goals, but I think I'm a very, personally, I'm a very in-the-moment person. Yes. I'll make yes. decisions, and I kind of go with it, and I'll have a temporary goal, and when that's done, it's on to the next thing. And I think as long as you're happy and you're achieving and you feel achieved, then that's important. But if you feel stuck and static, then that's bad. Then make yeah. a change. But I don't know if it's temporary goals. It's maybe short term and you have long term. Yeah, goals. your short term yeah. and long term. But when I hear people yeah. say like, oh, that's not part of my three year plan, yeah. I'm like, what? Hey, that <laughs> that three year plan has got to change really fast. Like, yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> I hate getting asked the question like, what, what's, your, what's your ultimate end goal? What do you want to do? And I'm like, I'm, I'm a freshman man like i don't even know what i what i don't know yet like that's the scary part like you ask me what do you want to be i'm i don't know i got a goal though and i really feel like that's what matters well and your goal is you want to have a college degree yeah. so for right now that's a good one it's okay i've and been a, take it. i've been a sophomore for six years <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. that word doesn't mean much to me it's just the way like our yeah. degree is but like <laughs> I'm, I feel like a senior, but like yeah. it's to Valencia, I'm still a sophomore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, two years of, you've, you've never gone outside of Valencia? You've always been at Valencia? No, I, I two years it, and that's just art, the way it went. Two years I mean, the, I've done stuff. Because like, you said six years, so. Yeah, I'm, and I mean, I'm not counting the times like kind of in between high school where I didn't know. My, my parents were super cool about not putting any pressure on me like you have to go to the school or go to the, or even go to college and they even said to me straight out of high school oh, college isn't for everyone I'm like okay and uh and I just I took like but I was always being productive I took like art classes at Curry all day and I mean I, I did stuff and then I was at a pottery studio downtown for a while and that was unfulfilling so then I made so then you make a change and then yeah. it just kind of drove its way but yeah it's yeah it's been like six years with the gen eds and then when i finally decided okay i'll do fine art and then gen eds and then okay i'll do graphic design oh now i gotta do all the graphic design and then i updated my catalog year and and then now yeah it's been six years just doing that gotcha. part yeah gotcha yeah you never know where life will take you yeah and, <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's the important thing especially like we were saying earlier about college we get this pressure on ourselves of um okay i have to do this in two years and this is going to be my career and this and that, and and then I think people feel this box, like this lock on themselves, like, like, well, I'm stuck in this now. I've already sunk like such and such time. Like I've sunk a whole year in this. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be worse to sink your whole time into it, do it, still not like it, then go back to school. Mm -hmm. Just make the change in college. The yeah. point is to try new things. As long as you're working on yourself, you can't be. Yeah. Right. It's it, exactly. Just got to keep progressing mm -hmm. ultimately. So we'll have to ask Jeff, Jeff about his leaders. We will, we will. But another question. What piece of advice would you give someone seeking an internship? Do it now. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> All right. um, ultimately, I, I feel the reason um, – it was always pushed for me to go to college um, as, it, as I was younger. But, I mean, as I went through high school, um, it kind of wasn't as much. And the whole thing came up of, well, maybe you don't need to go to college. Maybe you can do something else for a little bit. Take a break. Well, after I did take my year, um, I, I did – I really met the right amount of 
right people and they gave me a boost and they got me in the mindset of like, go to college, do what you've always – like do what you wanted to do and plan to do. Like really just go out there and, and do it. Um, and they ultimately they told me, they said, the biggest thing to do is get an internship while you're in college. And I never realized how big internships actually were mm -hmm. because in high school you get pushed so much about scholarships, scholarships, scholarships. Well, when you're in college and you go through college, if you don't have no experience afterwards, the employers don't really want to hire you. They'd rather hire the guy with the experience. I mean, you could have the A's, but if he's if he's got experience and some B's and C's, he's done it before. And I and I only I've I've seen this like with my own eyes, like as an intern and coming up and like being um, like and seeing businesses and being within businesses, and. Um, just like we were at the UCF and we, we, we were yeah, doing that Yeah, he went event. to the UCF uh, intern pursuit. Oh, oh I'll okay. have to, yeah. I'm connecting mm. with the professor over there. On the yeah, end. I was, uh, we, oh. we were doing that and I, I was talking to the students and they were, uh, like I tell them I'm an intern also and they're like, oh, well, I'm a senior and I'm like, I'm about to graduate. Uh, what, what year are you in? I'm, I'm, a, I go, I'm, I'm a freshman year and they're like, <laughs> Oh my gosh! And they get all freaked out, and I'm like, I'm like, look, it's, as long as you're doing it, it's not too late. There's there's people that are 40 and like 50 that do internships. It's never too late for anybody. But you're not the norm. Normally, people do internships towards the, uh, yeah. Junior, oh, yeah, the junior senior, senior year, year. Yeah. because they have more course specific um, and they know what direction they want to go. Most employers won't um, pick somebody that's a freshman or a sophomore. Right. Yeah. You know. So he interviewed really well, and he stood out in the area of marketing and sales. And so that's why I, I took I took a it's, chance on him because normally you know I don't, it, people I, wait. I, I feel like as much as as much as they older people they do separate millennials like we were talking about a lot of the times they don't also it's it's their impressions on you so if you come up come up and you're confident and and you're you're really going like this is I'm going for it I'm doing it and as a freshman myself I I feel like that definitely like gave me a big disadvantage on it coming up of just being young but then. With Isabella, like I remember I, when I was talking to her, actually, I almost remember it vividly. I started off <laughs> just as we started this off a second ago. And then I kind of, she talked to me and she made me feel a little more comfortable. And that's when I was like, you know, let me, let me talk to her. Let me, let me not act like she's just going to like some. Not, I'm not going to blow you off. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I, I was, cred I felt credible, you know, mm -hmm. like when you walk into a big place, I feel like in college, like, um, with, through professors and all these people that know so many things you get. You get like this lack of credibility behind you. Not even intimidated, but just like this lack of my my voice doesn't really like matter. Mm -hmm. But all I need is for internships, start it now because whether if you don't know what you want to do or not, it's still helping you figure out what you want to do. And that's honestly mm -hmm. what it's it's given to me. It's 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 t teaching me who I am and who I want to be on the way and I feel like that's why I do my internships that's why I, I do my internship for pivot is because I believe in the in internships I do and because of the people I got around I, I do believe in this business and she asks me all the time like um, are you I don't put I know I don't expect you to stay with me through next semester I was like I was like even if I could do one day a week or half a day I was like or even just remotely I would still help you as much as I can when I can just because of how much I do believe in the whole internship process and it, like it, once back, going back to the revolu the evolving of technology, it's it's getting more complicated, mm -hmm. and, and these businesses they they need to learn how to like I feel teach them themselves, and it would it would it would help the the education system I feel mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm wording that terribly. I, I guarantee I know, you, but yeah, <laughs> the education system. I, I really care about education. Now. It wasn't a big thing in my past, but mm -hmm. now that I'm not all in sports and physical and everything like that, I'm like. I really like learning. It's it's really valuable, and once you get in the mindset of like the value of education, it it's really humbling and it's really it's really um, outlooking and it's really really helpful in life. I feel. So I know we're gonna we've got somebody else that's gonna be coming in behind us. So our clock is ticking. Oh. I'll remind you. So, but we want to hear about his leaders real of quick. Course. So, who, living or dead, has influenced your life in a positive way? Um, I would say. I know you're asking her like on a global, global, local and level and personal. Um, I'm also kind of the same way. I'm very personal, but I want to say off the top of my head um, on a global scale. I know the recently just in my life, um, there's this guy I, since I've started college, actually, his name's Simon Sinek. I've, I've, I followed him on like uh, yeah, Facebook and I watched him on his TED talk and as, as cliche as it sounds, but like, you know, you can watch videos sometimes mm -hmm. and you feel like it just really connects to you. 
I remember he did a presentation. I can't remember where it was, but it was about uh, his his circle chart, and it's about um, we we operate with the uh, what, how, and why, you know, and we and that's how we start. We start out with the what, and then we go to the how, and we go to the why. But then he reversed it, and he goes, you know, the successful people, the the big companies, they start with the why. And he I, he I think he explained uh, Apple products, like why do you buy an Apple? Because mm -hmm. it's Apple. You know, mm -hmm. and then, then he goes on to the why and how and the what. And just the just the training your brain and mind and going back to the education system, uh, I, re I really like that. I really like the training your brain mm -hmm. uh, thing. Um, I'd say all, another person who I, I'd say was a, a big impact on my life. Um, it's, honestly, it's my buddy, my buddy Mark over in Afghanistan right now. Uh, we, we, we wrestled together in uh, high school. And if honestly it wasn't for him, I, I – probably wouldn't have graduated high school not because like i was not because i'm not i was not smart or anything like that just because i was i was distracted by a lot of things and i was a little i think i was i was a hothead in high school and i remember he he always humbled me out he he always he always kept me in check and same thing with same thing with him in multiple other ways and i want to get i, I definitely want to definitely want to call him out as a leader in a lot of yeah. things like uh he's helped me a lot now he's over there and he's uh he's, he should be coming back here and June, 20, June or July. I can't wait for that. And uh, I just want to say thanks for uh, thanks for supporting the country, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, ultimately, the main person who's who's really in, um, done the best for me in my life is my mom. Um, just like you, me and my mom have been through tremendous things since I was little. Coming from Pennsylvania down here to New Smyrna, don't even want to get into like everything else. But just keep it short she's amazing i've never i've never met a stronger woman in my life and and to this day she still proves it to me over and over and over again mm -hmm. coming from me whether it's driving to me for my youth wrestling tournaments at negative 10 degrees and blizzards and we can't <laughs> see to just you know picking me up at the at the end of a football game going get up get up you know you're fine you're fine in the middle of a game she was tougher than my coaches man yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is like an unofficial Mother's Day. So thanks to all the moms. Thanks, thanks mom. mom. All the good moms out there. You should say it to each other. Thank you, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, auntie, too. Just yeah, that's always right. important. That's right. I love you, dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I think we, we've got to move on to our yeah. commercial. Cause Thank like, you, Jeff, assistant, yeah. for yeah. being our intern. I appreciate spotlight. it. Appreciate yeah. it. So, Valencia Spotlight. So, I want to give a special shout-out to Valencia College here on the East Campus. Thank you, Q, for the ability to have this show and be able to share our, our thoughts and our wisdom, hopefully, with all of our listeners and the great atmosphere, the knowledgeable staff. We love you guys all. And I think we're going to have to – I'm not going to be able to share some of the other stuff, but that's okay. I'll save it for next week. <laughs> all right, but any more shout-outs before we end the show? Um, thank you, Isabella. Yeah, for yeah, uh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I'm saying thank, thank you to you Isabella. guys for being my guests. Yeah. Yeah. You're the reason thank we're you. here. Yeah, yeah. 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 I appreciate well, that. Yeah. I appreciate it that you guys are here also. So um, we're going to be having Lake Highland Prep, so I'm excited about that. They're going to be coming up here as a guest. Next week we have some other really interesting guests, so people should be following us on our social feeds to see who those people will be. Awesome. And before we end the show, I want to do what we did at the beginning where I said, this is Jerron, this is Isabella, but with you guys as well. So you guys ready? All mm -hmm. right. All right. This is Jerron. I'm Jeff Basista. I'm Taylor Chastain. This is Isabella. And thank you for listening to the Intern Whisperer Live. We'll see you next week. <laughs>